Good morning, students. I am Dr. Sunla Thomas, Associate Professor of Titus Second Teachers College, Thiruvalla. Today, I will be dealing with the topic Implications of Learning Theories of Gagne, which comes under Module 1. And his learning theory is of utmost importance to all teachers as well as teacher educants. And Robert M. Gagne's hierarchy of learning. Robert Mills Gagne, that's his full name. Robert Mills Gagne was an American educational psychologist best known for his conditions of learning. And his theory stipulates that there are several types and levels of learning. And let me tell you, each level requires instruction that is tailored to meet the needs of the pupil and according to Gagne learning is a change in human disposition or capability and any new capability involves the subordinate capabilities which are based on prior learning that means whatever you teach your student he should have a prerequisite of what is to be taught there. So, he should have a basic understanding of that particular capability. That is what it means. And as each learning leads to the next learning, that means proceeding from simple to complex, Gagne has graded the learning processes in the hierarchical order of complexity. And after completion of this session, you will realize that this is a blend of behavioral aspects of learning and cognitive aspects of learning and he has graded eight types of learning and that is why it's called Gagne's hierarchy of learning and out of the eight you will realize that the lowest four orders form the behavioral aspects of learning and the highest four focus on the cognitive aspects and that is how teaching should take place. So beginning with his theory the first hierarchical learning, according to him, is signal learning. The word signal gives us so much of uh, ideas there. Imagine a traffic signal. What happens when we reach a traffic signal? And if it's a red signal, we stop our vehicle there and we wait for the signal to change. When it becomes green, we start moving our vehicle. So that is, the signal is associated with what one is expected to do and this happens ev everywhere when you take a child or when you see a small child if he's, if the child sees his mother coming what happens he immediately smiles and if it's a newcomer his reaction changes there so there is a signal which is associated with what one does in the classroom situation when the bell rings children enter the class as soon as they see the teacher, they stand up and they also take their notebooks also. All this is the association of the signal with what one is expected to do. And this is the lowest form of learning. Proceeding from there, you reach the next level of learning that is stimulus response learning. I told you once signal learning is over, the next is stimulus response learning. Here, we know that the response based on the stimulus is emitted. That means you have learned Skinner's operant conditioning theory. Their emitted response is there. That means in the signal learning, it is involuntary action. You do it there. That means it's based on classical conditioning there. Here it is emitted. The response comes voluntarily there and it is in, in, instrumental to getting reinforcement. So, response is required for getting reinforcement and learning takes place through this reinforcemental behavior. Uh, in a classroom, what happens? The teacher shows a model or a specimen and asks about it. The students, when they respond to it, further learning takes place. And another situation I can tell you, uh, keeping a plant in a dark room. What happens to the plant? It gets destroyed. The keeping the plant in a dark room is a stimulus there and the response of the plant is being destroyed there. 
if you keep it in sunlight the change you can experience so in the same way teachers should realize that learning better learning takes place only when there is reinforcement and the sr bond should be strengthened that means the stimulus response bond should be strengthened and proceeding from there we more we move on to the next level of learning and that is chaining there is learning occurs by connecting a series of stimulus response units and there are two types of chaining one is motor chaining from the word itself we can know that it is related to the psychomotor aspects of it that means it is under integrating a series of stimulus response units to form an action it involves our eye hand coordination or eye leg coordination example i uh, to tell you kicking dancing playing all these are examples of motor chaining and even drawing in a classroom you teach something and you ask the child to draw that that drawing involves several steps there so that is motor chaining but then another one is verbal chaining verbal chaining means related to verbal activities or vocabularies so learning to read write or speak suppose you ask a child to pronounce cat cat c a t cat so the verbal chaining linking of the stimulus is there and verbal chaining takes place from there the next level forms that is verbal association because many words linked together leads to a chain of action there and that is verbal association actually it is a higher form of verbal chaining because you teach in a class the different procedures or whatever it is if the child is made to do experiments if you are ask him to give the procedure of doing that experiment there is a connection or a series of vocabulary in relation to what he has done so if it is sequently sequentially presented verbal association takes place so what the teacher can do in a class the teacher can provide hints clues cues feedback or drill exercises and help the child to make connection between his ideas and words and that is how the verbal association takes place and from there the child enters the next level of learning and that is multiple discrimination multiple discrimination from the word itself we can know that the ability to discriminate the ability to categorize and the individual here makes appropriate responses to a series of similar stimuli and it is ability of the learner to discriminate one aspect from the other for example if he sees a number of cars on the road and if he is able to discriminate one car from the other by its specific features we can say that he has attained multiple discrimination he sees his friends many friends and if he is able to call each friend by his own name you can say multiple discrimination has taken place and uh, among uh, the child when he sees his mother among many ladies if he is able to identify his mother and call him call mother by her amma or whatever it is then you say multiple discrimination takes place so the ability to differentiate leads to multiple discrimination in classroom situation if we want the child to come to this level give him provide him situations provide him appropriate conditions or features by which the materials are ordered if he has to identify a triangle from a set of shapes we should give the features of a triangle that a triangle is three sided and all those things so that is how he comes to a conclusion about certain things that means he attains the next level that is the concept learning now he learns the concept of triangle he realizes that unlike other shapes a triangle has three sides and all the three sides are connected and it is closed also so it has three vertices so this is the concept related to triangle similarly he can uh, observe the shape or, or do many things there like concept of uh, herbivorous animals the concept of uh, inertia concept of kinetic energy potential energy he can come and find out the features there the common characteristics of that particular stimuli and decide the concept there that is he attains the concept there so this is very essential in a classroom level 
because as a teacher decides that the concept is properly attained by the learner then only the next level of learning takes place that is the principle or rule learning that is actually it is a relation between various concepts linking of many concepts leads to principle i told you the example of triangle if he knows the concept of triangle then only you can teach him various various theorems or principles related to the triangle if he knows a game if a child knows a game only you can teach him the rules of that game how to play that game you cannot teach a person who does not have um, who does not know that game he has not even heard of that game that means that concept is essential to build the principles on it to the next level problem solving problem solving is the highest level because once the principles is thorough once the rules related to that is thorough he can move on to the next level of learning that is a problem solving ability and this is what is really needed for a learner to lead a smooth life because a problematic situation comes he should be able to face the challenges he should be able to sort out things so there he will be applying the knowledge or the skills that he has already learned from many experiences so he is given an, an opportunity to apply it in a new situation for that the teachers should give case studies projects assignments or many other cases simple simple uh, work for the child to gain this problem solving ability because you know problem solving ability involves various steps he has to sense the problem he has to define the problem he has to formulate hypothesis he has to verify the hypothesis and then arrive at conclusion the problem solving steps are there so once he attains this highest level of learning gagne says he has attained the skill of learning that means he is able to apply whatever he has learned in a new situation what so what have we learned today today we have learned gagne's hierarchy of learning there are eight levels of learning and the first one is signal learning from there stimulus response learning and then comes chaining as you know chaining is of two types motor chaining and verbal chaining and the next one is verbal association followed by multiple discrimination and then comes concept learning then comes principle or rule learning and the last level of learning is problem solving and thank you children i hope you have understood what we have learned today and don't forget to relate this with your subject and that is your assignment learn this and then relate it with your subject and see how these stages can be incorporated there these levels can be incorporated thank you and have a good day and wish you all the best